Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Last video I have explained you about the law of variable proportions. What are the different stages in the law of variable proportions? Very frequently asked in examination in business economics to explain the meaning of the term law of variable proportions. So I have explained in detail in the last video. If you have not watched that video, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject business economics, select the video production analysis. In that video, you will find the video of uh, this law of variable proportions. Now in this video, I am going to explain you another important question. That is what are the reason for this law of variable proportions? What are the reasons for the different stages? in the law of variable proportions. Already we have discussed that there are three stages in the law of variable proportion. The first stage, the output is increasing at an increasing rate. The second stage, the output is increasing but at a decreasing rate. And the last stage, third stage, the output is diminishing. So instead of increasing, it is declining. So these three stages will occur in the law of variable proportions. Now in examination a question will be asked what are the reasons for these three stages. In this video I am going to explain you the reasons for the three stages. But before that take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board then I will explain the reasons. Now, first of all, we'll recap the law of variable proportion, then uh, we'll discuss about the reasons. First of all, this law has a great significance in economic theory. Just like law of diminishing marginal utility, law of demand, law of supply, similarly, this law of variable proportion has a great significance in economics. Now, this law examines the production function Production function expresses the technical relationship between input and output. So the how, how the output will change for a given change in input. That relationship between input and output is the main theme of this law of variable proportion. So this law examines the production function with one factor input varying variable by keeping the other factor fixed factors input fixed that means there are two types of factors of production variable factor production and fixed factor production now in this law of variable proportion will examine what is the effect on output for a given change in variable factors of input we are not changing the fixed factor fixed factor remaining constant only when variable factors are changing what is the effect on the output that is the main concentration on of this law of variable proportion in a true sense it reflects the relationship between input and output when the output is increased by varying the quantity of one input only one input we are varying what is the effect on the output that is the main I mean concentration of this law the law of variable proportion is the new name for the famous law of diminishing returns of classical economists actually this law of variable proportion is not a new one it is the same old law that old law according to classical economics was law of diminishing returns now the name has been changed instead of law of diminishing returns we will call it law as law of variable proportions now has a great economic thought and occupies an important place in modern economic policy in modern economics this law is very very significant very important now according to law of variable proportion now what is this law specifically i am giving the explanation here According to law of variable proportion, as more and more units of a variable factor are combined, as more and more units of variable factors are combined with a small quantity, with the same quantity of fixed factor, 
That means the fixed factor of production is not changing. We are keeping it constant. Only we are varying, we are changing the variable factor. The total product first increases at an increasing rate. Then the decreasing rate and then finally starts diminishing. So as we keep constant the fixed factor and slowly increasing the variable factor of production. What will happen? In the first stage the output is increasing at a very high rate. At an increasing rate the output is increasing. This is the first stage. In second stage the output is increasing but at a very low rate. At a lower rate the output is increasing. In the third and final stage the output will diminish, will decrease. As we go on increasing the variable factor of production the output is declining. These are the three stages according to the law of variable proportion. Now I am coming to the main point that is the reasons for these three stages. Reasons for the different stages of law. Reasons for increasing returns. In the first stage the output is increasing at a very high rate. So what are the reasons why the output is increasing at a very high rate? The reasons are first one. Under utilization of fixed factor. Example. In any uh, production process, the main fixed factor is land. When we are not optimally utilizing the land, when we are not fully utilizing the land, now when we increase the variable factor, the utility, the utilization of land will increase. When the fixed factor is increasing more, then definitely the output will be at a very high rate. So better utilization, optimum utilization of fixed factor that leads to increasing output. The land is a fixed factor which is underutilized with respect to labor employed on it. Many a times land will be not fully utilized. Whereas when we increase the other factor, variable factor called labor, land is fixed. Whereas we go on increasing the labor factor then the utilization of land will increase. More land can be better utilized by using more labor. This helps in effective and better utilization of land, thereby increasing returns. Because earlier, before increasing labor, the land was not fully utilized. When we increase the labor content, the, labor, the land is more and more utilized. When we utilize the more fixed factor, the returns will increase at a higher rate. That is the first factor, first reason. The second reason, indivisibility of factor. There are some factors which are not divisible, which cannot be divided into smaller parts. The factors that are used in production process are indivisible. That is, there is no possibility of dividing them into smaller parts. Hence, there is an increasing in returns when more units of the variable factor are integrated and with the fixed factors. Indivisible. We cannot be able to divide some factors of production. So when we cannot, I mean, divide some factors of production, we can combine the limited variable factors with the fixed factors, thereby increasing the output. Then third one is specialization of labor. Now, since there is an increase in number of laborers, division or specialization of labor will result in increasing return. We are bringing in specialization in the production process. That means every stage of the production process will be manned by a specialized, experienced, expert person. So this specialization or experience will increase the returns. So these are the three reasons why in the first stage the output is increasing at a very high rate. The first reason was underutilization of fixed factor. Earlier it was underutilized. Now when we increase the labor variable factor, we can better utilize the fixed factor. Then it, indivisibility of factor. Some factors of production cannot be divided. 
so those factors can be combined with the fixed factor to give increasing returns third be thirdly specialization of labor can be brought up because when we increase the labor more and la more labor will come we can bring specialization that will this will increase the returns three reasons now reasons for decreasing rate in the second stage when we come in the second stage the output is increasing at a decreasing rate first stage the output is increasing at a very high speed second stage the output is not increasing at a very high speed it is increasing but at a lower rate what is the reason optimal use of fixed factor once we cross the first stage we are in the second stage we have optimally fully utilized the fixed factor now no more we can use the fixed factor because fixed factor are 100% fully utilized the fixed factor land is fully utilized with respect to labor employed on it this results in decreasing returns now more and more labor we cannot apply because as we uh, employ more and more labor we can able to utilize the land at its maximum extent full utilization after that there is no scope of utilization more of land that's why the return will decrease lack of perfect substitute between two factors there may be a situation where there cannot be any substitute for two factors of production that means all production factors are available in small quantities returns start decreasing if there exists imperfect substitute of a factor with another factor if there is a lack of substitute between one factor with another factor then again we cannot increase the output at a higher rate our output will increase at a lower rate because we don't have any substitutes we cannot change one factor with another factor this may be the reason why the output is increasing at a lower rate in the second stage last stage is the reasons for negative returns if we further increase the variable factor keeping constant the fixed factor then what will happen the output the return will diminish will decrease so instead of increasing the output the output is diminishing decreasing this is the last stage of law of variable proportion so why this negative or dec declining stage will occur over utilization of fixed factor there is a limit on the utilization of fixed factor if we over utilize the fixed factor then definitely the output will decrease instead of increasing because we have completely utilized the fixed factor the fixed factor is land is said to be over utilized when the variable factor labor are keep on adding to the given quantity of fixed factor fixed factor is land variable factor is labor we go on increasing the labor keeping constant the fixed land then what will happen that means the land cannot be fully utilized maximum it is used then over employment of labor will decrease the output this gives rise to lower availability of equipment and tools for each worker and leads to fall in the productivity when we increase the labor more and more more and more it requires more tools it requires more techniques then with the help of fixed i mean factor we cannot be able to utilize the labor the labor productivity will come down so also several laborers on a fixed factor may disturb each other causing decline in productivity another too many laborers are there it will disturb themselves they cannot be able to work properly because so many labor has come on the fixed factor land what will happen the labor productivity will come down this will happen in third stage when negative returns diminishing the management problems one more reason for declining output is management problems there is a decrease in efficiency when too much of variable factor labor is employed it is difficult to manage the labor so many labor so many variable factors are employed it will be difficult for the management to manage the labor to manage the variable factor and this may be the reason the management problem arises and due to which the productivity may fall down that's it so in this video i have explained you about the reasons why 
the three stages will occur in the law of variable proportions these questions are very very important most often it will be asked in examination so watch the video twice thrice definitely you can be able to remember the points and you can write excellently in examination i wish you all the best for your preparations for your exams inshallah we will continue our discussion on production analysis in the next video